Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we'll be covering how RPE can be used when programming hypertrophy training. First, we need to establish what RPE means. RPE is an acronym for Rate of Perceived Exertion. Essentially, RPE is a subjective measure of how difficult an exercise was. A trainee rates the exercise they just performed on a scale from 1 to 10, with 1 being the easiest and 10 being the most difficult. This scale can be used for a wide variety of exercises, including team sports, endurance training, and resistance training. However, we're going to focus on its application to resistance training today, for the purpose of muscle hypertrophy. The use of RPE in resistance training is unique in its meaning. Since resistance training uses reps as a method of tracking performance, the RPE scale can be used very neatly with this form of exercise. After a set is completed for a given number of repetitions, RPE can be used to assess how close that set was to failure. Each RPE score correlates to one repetition, where an RPE of 10 means that no more reps could have been performed. An RPE of 9 means that one more rep could have been performed before failure, an RPE of 8 means that two more reps could have been performed before failure, and so on. Now that we understand what RPE is, we will now discuss what benefits RPE has over traditional programming prescriptions. RPE is a way to auto-regulate training, based on how the trainee is adapting. Prescribing concrete sets, reps, and loads assumes that we can predict exactly how the trainee will respond to the training, which is almost impossible since individuals can have very different responses. This could potentially limit progress for someone, as they may be able to adapt at a faster rate than what the program suggests. RPE can also be used to program for trainees of different levels of advancement. Since the RPE system is based on individual feedback, it can cater for a wide range of people, Rather than trying to assume the rate of progression for an advanced or an intermediate trainee, using RPE can make this exactly suited to their individual responses. Let's now explore how RPE can be used to write a program for hypertrophy. We know that hypertrophy can be achieved using a wide variety of rep ranges and loads, so the exact reps and sets we use don't actually matter to any significant degree. We do generally want to stick into a ballpark rep range that we prescribe and use a load appropriate for that rep range, although we don't need to worry about exact details. Provided that each set is taken fairly close to failure, we can achieve hypertrophy outcomes. Let's have a look at a standard 4-day hypertrophy program that will follow a 4-week overloading phase before a 1-week deload. The first step is to determine how many sets will be performed per muscle group per week. This step requires individual experimentation to determine how much volume will achieve the desired hypertrophy adaptations while not exceeding recovery thresholds. For this example, we have chosen 18 sets for the chest, 16 sets for the back, 16 sets for the quads, 14 sets for the glutes slash hamstrings, 24 sets for the biceps, 24 sets for the triceps, and 8 direct sets for the calves. I've left out some muscle groups in this example, such as the abs and the delts, because this is just an example and we don't need to go into every single detail of every single muscle group. Now that we have the number of sets for each muscle group, we can now input the number of sets that will be performed into the program. We now need to determine a ballpark rep range for each exercise that we want to be working in. As we can see here, reps of 6 and higher have been selected for each exercise, and the rep ranges undulate throughout the week for the same muscle groups. For example, the bench press uses a 6 to 10 rep range on day 1, and uses an 8 to 12 rep range on day 3. The next step is to choose a load that allows the trainee to perform the exercise roughly in the rep ranges prescribed with fairly high effort. It doesn't matter if the load doesn't correlate exactly within the chosen rep ranges, since we will use RPE to determine the number of reps performed anyway. For example, I've inputted loads for each exercise simply for the sake of the video. 
For this program, the loads don't change throughout the five week program since overload will be applied via increasing RPE. So now that we have the number of sets established for each muscle group and the loads determined for each exercise, we can now use RPE to apply progressive overload. Some general rules when using RPE for hypertrophy training is that we don't ever want to go below an RPE of around 5 to 6 for heavy loads and 6 to 7 for light loads. This is because if we don't take the set close enough to failure, we may not actually stimulate all the muscle fibers in the muscle group and reduce hypertrophy potential. Heavy loads will also stimulate all muscle fibers much sooner than lighter loads, which is why lighter loads should be taken closer to failure most of the time. RPE can be applied to our example program in the following way. As we can see for all exercises, the RPE increases throughout the training program, except for the deload week. So if the RPE increases and the load remains the same, the trainee should be performing more reps each week. If more reps are not being performed each week, then they may be training with too much volume to recover and adapt to. So assuming the volume is appropriate and the trainee is performing more reps each week, then progressive overload is being applied. We can see in this program that not all exercises follow the same RPE progression. The heavier compound lifts don't reach as high RPEs as the lighter, more isolated exercises. This is for both safety reasons and the fact that heavier loads don't need to be taken as close to failure as lighter loads. Now that RPEs have been prescribed, the trainee must perform the program and record how many reps were performed for each set of each exercise. This is necessary to determine the rate of progress and guide future training programs. Naturally, the reps performed should increase over the program since the trainee will be going closer to failure over time. For example, day one of this training program may look something like this. We can see that each week, more reps were performed for each exercise since RPE is increasing. Now we have established how RPE can be used for an individual program. Now we will cover how we can create a long-term program for hypertrophy. Once the initial program has been completed, we need to make the following program more difficult to adapt to a new stimulus. We should change the program based on how we are progressing with the individual exercise, rather than changing the entire program for the sake of it. This is because we may be plateauing at one or two particular exercises, but we are still progressing well in the rest. So we'll simply use one exercise as an example for the periodization planning. Once the initial program is completed, we have a few options to select for the next program. The first is to not change the sets, RPE and load at all. If the trainee hasn't been performing the exercise for very long, or they are a novice, this may be a good option. If they repeat the same set and rep scheme with the same RPEs, then they may actually be able to perform more reps with the same load since they have become bigger and stronger from the last block. In this example, we have kept the same program for two blocks in a row, and we can see that this trainee has increased the number of reps performed each week in the second block compared with the first block. However, this method will only work for a short period of time before the trainee's performance plateaus. The second option is to keep the sets and RPE the same, but increase the load slightly. This will have the trainee perform their sets in a slightly lower rep range, although they can then increase the number of reps being performed over time with this new heavier load. For example, if the trainee uses a load of 100 kilos for the first block for the bench press, they may use 105 kilos for the second block and use the same RPE scheme. Eventually, if load is increased every block, the number of reps performed will reduce so low that hypertrophy is not being optimized. It is recommended that if reps drop below 6 on average for compound lifts, or 8 on average for isolation exercises, then load shouldn't be increased any further. The third option is to keep the RPE the same and increase the number of sets performed for that exercise. This should only be done if the previous two options have been exhausted. Only one to two extra sets should be added for the exercise throughout the week. Otherwise the trainee may not be able to recover from the total volume of work. For example, 
let's say the bench press cannot be increased in load or reps, a fourth set could be added in the next block as opposed to three sets. The last option is to change exercises. This is a good choice once all other options have been exhausted or the monotony of performing the same exercise is causing injury. An exercise that involves the same muscle groups can then be selected, and the former methods of progression can then be employed once again. For example, let's say that the bench press has plateaued and no further improvements are able to be made. This can be swapped with a dumbbell bench press for the next block, and the former methods of progression can then be employed once again. And lastly, let's have a look at how a long-term hypertrophy plan might unfold using our bench press as an example. As already mentioned, this should be done for all exercises based on how they are progressing, although we are just going to use one exercise as an example here. As we can see in block 1, we have the standard RPE progression that we have already established. This progression will be consistent for all of the following blocks too. In block 2, the trainee has maintained the same load but reps have been increased from the last block, since they have become bigger and stronger. In block 3, the trainee has increased the load from 100 kilos to 105 kilos, with the same RPE and number of sets. As we can see here, the reps have decreased slightly from the last block, since the weight is heavier. In block 4, the weight has remained the same, although more reps are performed than the previous block. And once again, the trainee has increased the load to 110 kilos in block 5, and the reps have decreased slightly again. In block 6, the load has remained at 110 kilos, although the reps have hardly increased from the last block, and they are starting to plateau. So in block 7, an extra set has been performed, since increasing the load again will cause reps to drop too low for hypertrophy training. Now in block 8, Reps are attempted to increase once again, although they have hardly increased and the trainee has exhausted their options for the bench press. So in block 9, the exercise has been switched to a dumbbell bench press, and the sets have been lowered back to 3. Now the trainee can increase the reps performed in block 10, since the exercise is novel and progress can be made. In block 11, the load is increased and the reps drop slightly, and in block 12, the same load is used and reps increase once again. The dumbbell bench press can now be employed until progression stagnates and then the exercise can be swapped once again. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.